Okay, this is part two. If you haven't watched part one, just click on the link below. I'll get straight into it. I bought two of these sheets of MDF from Bunnings, about eight dollars. And uh, I'm just sort of mocking up what I want to do in the back. So I've taken off the little plastic uh, corner there. Um, and I've just laid the MDF up against it to see what I want to do. Originally I wanted to put the compressor on top of like a little table ledge there so I was going to build it up high and have the compressor hose going out the window but as you'll see my plan changed. Uh, I shaved four centimeters I think it was off this piece of MDF to start with that's on the uh, shorter side of the MDF just to get it to the right length yeah it was four centimeters and um, then I have just laid it in I want the basically this little boxing up area to end just in front of the little plastic uh, cargo uh, tie down point and then I've just got the uh, off cut there and just laid it up against it and I've just used a piece of steel to hold it up and mark it for cutting uh, that's just to show the size there um, Man, I can't even see that. It's 60 something centimeters. You can zoom in 40, 40 centimeters by 60, something like that. Oh, there it is. Yeah, 40 by 14.5. Anyway, um, that's the two pieces just mocked up, uh, just sitting there, just getting some ideas. Uh, I'm going to uh, glue and screw it. So I got myself some uh, timber screws. I use these ones and a combination of, uh, they're, I think they're only like a 10 mil one as well. And um, just punch some holes in there with a, um, dr a little drill. I think it was a 3 mil or a 4 mil drill bit before I screw it in. That's pretty important so you don't split the MDF. I've just taken that little um, carpet panel out as well. Um, just trying to see what availability I've got there to run my wiring from the battery, uh, which is stored in the storage compartment. I realised I had to get rid of the seat belt. Um, but there was a couple of things in the way. One is this little plastic thing down the bottom that would stop my lid from opening that on the box. So I um, ended up prying the plastic off the side of the car and actually um, getting rid of the little um, clips on the back. And then the, that little plastic thing falls out of the way, as you'll see in the next picture. And that's it there. Uh, so now my lid, which is going to be hinged where I've marked it there, um, now it can actually open. I cut the board in half of that lid and I've recessed uh, two little slots with a, with my jigsaw, um, just uh, enough to hold the hinges in place. And um, now the that's fairly, like the, the gap between the two bits of wood's a lot closer now that I've recessed it, which is good. I didn't want too much of a gap. That's sort of what the lid looks like. Um, I didn't stop there, I thought oh, I want to put a handle so you can open the lid easily. So I cut a hole in the top of it like that and um, at Bunnings again I got um, this little, it's like it's for furniture making, it's like this little, um, just like a little stainless um, slot that you can put your finger in and lift up the lid and I wasn't happy enough with just that so I decided I um, wanted to make it a magnetic um, sort of a snap lid so that it magnetically shuts because I hate when you hear rattling in the car when you're driving so this is uh, just just trying to work out my placement on the lid of uh, where I'm going to put that magnetic um, holder and then just lining it up on marking on the top lid where the piece of metal's got to go that's, um, that's going to be attracted to the magnet just roughly measuring it and then yeah I just fixed it to the lid basically. Another important thing that I want to do with this box is have my air compressor outlet come out of the actual box because I'm going to hide the air compressor in the storage compartment underneath uh, which you'll see the full layout of the end photos anyway but uh, I decide I'm going to put it roughly about uh, a third of the way up the side of the box um, in the corner where it can't get snapped off easily and I went to Total Tools and I bought um, a couple of washers and some barb fittings and that to uh, get that going. They also sold hose, air hose, which was very cheap, $1.95 a metre. So I got three metres of that, uh, which is way too much. 
but uh, that'll get that going. After a few weeks, uh, all my goodies came in the mail, all off eBay. Um, this uh, my battery, inverter, heaps of electrical outlets, a uh, little 12 volt meter there. It's got all the stuff um, already pre-wired. Although when I started looking at the back of the wiring, I realised this wasn't laid out how I, I want to do it. I want it so that the switch turns on the uh, the USB and the fridge and all that. So uh, I did did some cutting and modifying of the wiring just to was pretty easy just add, cut one and add a connector in and then I've just mocked up roughly what I want to do there now you'll see a solar charge controller up the top there and 240 volt power mains power at the bottom that's um, going to be running off the inverter um, I've decided I'm gonna, I ran the uh, 8 gauge cabling through the vent and then out the window for the solar which will go up through the um, you know the back of the patrol uh, Pajero windows they pop open a little bit they crack open so I just fed the cable out and then shut the window again and that's going to go up to the roof this is just the mark out for my switches so I just marked all the switches out drilled the holes for where everything's going to be mounted and um, I don't know why I took this photo oh yeah that's the holes for the solar charge controller I mounted that underneath the lid so it's hidden and I just mocked everything up um, roughly how I'm going to do it keeping in mind I've got to glue and screw it and then paint it so just uh, PVA glue I don't know there's probably stronger stuff but that's what I had and um, then I just screwed everything together let it dry in the sun PVA gl uh, glue dries clear anyway but I did wipe all that to give it a nice finish and uh, if you've watched my false floor video you'll know I like to cabothane clear the the ply or the MDF before I paint it so I cabothane cleared that out of a can Bunnings about 10 bucks I think for the can and um, mounted my solar panel on the roof they're just two slimline um, pro rack uh, rails that go across the roof and just so happens they perfectly sit the the um, solar panel on top I gave it a lick of um, metal paint which you can see in my other false floor video part one the paint that I use um, it's a metal paint but if you cabothane clear the wood it it's very durable and it um, resists scratching and it's a nice finish so now we get to the bit underneath the floor so obviously you're going to remove that third row seats and um, I could have removed the plastic here but I left it in there to provide some insulation for the battery and this is where the wires and the air compressor um, are all going to be routed up into the box so I had to cut a little slot out of the um, the plastic there just to create a nice gap for all the wires and air compressor to make their way up from the bottom up to the box that I'm building this is where the jack normally sits uh, I've decided I want to recess the battery in there to one to um, stop too much movement of the battery and two because uh, once I cut this little section out the battery actually sits nice and snug in there and doesn't move around a lot and uh, gives me a good anchor for the uh, battery um, the actual I, I put some battery like a bracket to hold it in there um, don't know if I took a photo of it but yeah that's how the battery sits um, in its place um, I was conscious of the battery rubbing too much on things so I ended up taping up a lot of uh, bits and pieces also I'd, I um, you would have seen that little bit of metal see that on sticking up from the floor I didn't want the battery rubbing through on the bottom so I got some pine and just cut out some 5 inch and 3.8 inch pieces and that manages to space it really nicely off the floor and stop it from moving around too much as well. Also I didn't want the battery touching metal so it's good it just elevates it just a little bit up off the floor um, and really everything's snug in there I'm really happy with how the battery sits. I did have to shave a little bit which you'll see in the next photo had to shave a little bit off um, the top of the battery clamp because the bolt, uh, the sort of the long bits of metal um, that retain the battery, they weren't long enough, so I shaved a bit of plastic off the top, and it's all um, all real good there. That's sort of how it sits, and then um, I started uh, cutting my eight gauge. Just crimp, I just crimp it and then solder it. Um, I know that connector's not coming off, especially I solder it after I crimp it, so that stops us the uh, connector from slipping off. And then I mount my compressor pretty much side on to the battery. 
nice short run for the battery wires too to that compressor. Interestingly enough, this is a twin thumper from uh, Full Drive Supercenter. It's actually got a pressure switch built into it. When I gutted it, uh, I noticed that it's got a pressure switch, which uh, I'm going to make another video now on changing that pressure switch out for a 40 psi, and then when you're pumping, when your tyres are full, it'll actually automatically turn off. So um, please subscribe if you're interested in modding your um, thumper compressor. Um, this is just a photo of the red and blue wires. That's the inside of the thumper. I'm actually going to hijack those two wires. I unplugged them and then I ran them up to my switch, board, um, switch control panel so that I can switch the compressor on remotely. Um, I could have tapped into them or something, but I just it, they already had connectors. It was so easy to unplug them. A uh, bit of an idiot here. I decided to drill a hole in the side of the plastic uh, for the top of the thumper, but then I realised the air compressor tube that runs across the top is going to get really hot, so I ended up uh, cutting a slot in the bottom instead, and um, the wires will be safe there. They won't get melted. And uh, yeah, that's a photo of uh, my retardedness drilling a hole up there when um, the outlet's so close it would have got really hot and melted the wires, so glad I realised that. Um, cable tied all my wiring. I've, I ran a few extra wires up to the switch thing from there. Um, uh, one to provide power to the solar charge controller and to, uh, for the solar charge controller to charge the battery. Ran my air air wire there, um, air line and I taped it with some heat tape because the outlet of your air compressor gets very hot and I didn't want it, any of that um, distorting or getting kinked so I put about 10 centimeters of hot tape on there. You can get that on eBay. And um, then I just hooked all the wiring up and I mainly wanted to check if my solar charge controller is doing its thing. It's a sexy little unit. It tells you the, what the battery is at, how many amps the the solar panel's putting out. Um, you can set it to turn off your load if it drains the battery too much. It'll say it'll protect your battery, and you can tell it when the when to for the solar power to um, the panel to stop charging your battery. So you can choose what voltage you want it to stop charging at, which is it's handy if you're running lithium you want it to charge to a higher voltage than say AGM then that's what I went for was an AGM gel battery 135 amp hour um, should keep the fridge running and air compressor and everything running for days I bought some nice little bus bars from JCAR so you can uh, put one positive in and then have many out and same for the earth it's just a quick view of my wiring uh, I glued the lid on um, just with some epoxy and um, put the final touches on it. That's what it looks like, finished. Um, the inverter I just straight to the battery and then ran it up to there. It doesn't run through the switch block or anything. And it all looks quite neat and tidy. I haven't quite finished, I'm going to put a water pump and shower in but thanks for watching. Uh, I know it's a rush video but I really didn't want to make it too long even with me rushing it through, it's like 13 minutes. Please subscribe, I'll probably do one more episode just to finish off this storage uh, series.